Welcome back to another video this is a part 14 of. What if Issei fell in love with Sona after Rias broke his heart? I don't really want to drag out the intro so let's get started. Chapter 53, Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 53, Morning Antics. Scene, Hyodo Home. It was very early in the morning as Issei teleported successfully, for the first time ever, near the front door of his home. Checking his wrist watch, it was only 5 a.m. Well, I am so glad that I've mastered the art of not waking Sona, but to finally be able to use magic circles, that's freaking awesome. Yay me, Issei, quietly, was speaking to himself followed up by a self-reassuring nod and very warm smile. Turning the door handle, Issei stealthily walked into home. It was still dark and the lights were turned off, however Issei's devil vision made this barely an inconvenience. On his way down the hallway, a twinkle caught his eye. The shine came from near the broom closet. Standing next to what caught his eye, Issei saw the split piece of that one, pain in the ass, sword that he had broken. Oh, hello, asshole. You are going in the dumpster, yes you are. Issei proceeded to pick the broken blade only to regret his actions immediately. Shit, 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 it fucking burns. Hey, why can't I release it? Issei is now flailing his arm while trying to let go of the sword only for his sacred gear to manifest. Glowing from the green jewel of his crimson gauntlet, Dedrag spoke. How very interesting, I think I can make use of this. Dedrag, I can't let this thing go. It burns like fire. Issei continued to flail in pain. Calm yourself and endure it for just a while longer. I need to concentrate so be quiet, partner. Issei's gauntlet began to glow with colors of red and green which continued to greatly intensify. Then the crimson and clawed hands began to tighten their hold against the now golden glowing blade. Hurry the fuck up. Dude, it really hurts. Issei was cringing with pain as he bit his lip. Almost there, almost there, and, done. The golden glow of the broken blade completely dissipated while what was left of the sword shattered into microscopic pieces and blew away as if nothing more than dust. Oh for hell's sake, that really hurt. Issei was panting while holding onto his gauntleted arm as the pain started to die down. Extraction, completed, interfacing, interfacing, updating, updating, completed. Welsh Dragon Boosted Gear Program, rebooting, please wait. Issei's gauntlet vanished. What the hell was that all about? Issei was waiting for a response however it was taking far longer than he'd like. Issei, Papa, turning around toward the living room, Little Rias accompanied with Little Kuno, were both wiping their sleepy eyes. Kuno, um, Rias, hey good morning girls. Issei was rubbing the back of his head when Kuno darted from Rias's side and just like a little golden blur, she reappeared attached to one of Issei's legs. Papa, good morning, I want breakfast. Kuno seemed overjoyed at her father's presence. Rias proceeded to walk up calmly toward Issei, who was now looking back at her. Issei. We haven't hugged in forever. Can we? Nodding. Issei holds out his arm. Little Rias wraps her arms around the teen's side as Issei lowers his arm around her shoulder. I'm so sorry, Issei. Wah. Crying in his shirt was Little Rias with an extreme case of bedhead. Shish. I know, I know, it's okay. Shish. Issei was patting Rias's head with one hand and doing the same with Kuno's head using his other hand. He had a warm and understanding smile on his face. Look, I forgive you, okay. As far as your situation, well, I have no control over that. But don't worry, president is Rias and Rias is president. Issei thought about what he had just said and hoped it was conveyed properly. Rias, who stopped crying, looked up at Issei with her large blue and watery eyes. Really, you bet, Rias. Issei winked while smiling. Rias smiled brightly while her tears continued to flow. You called me by my name. Not in anger, not in extreme cases, but because you, Rias was cut off by Kuno. Boring. Come on, let's go make some breakfast. I told Ria Tan that me and you make a great team in the kitchen. She huffed and puffed about it. She is so funny, Papa. Kuno was also looking up at Issei with stars in her golden eyes. Issei looked at both girls while showing a nervous smile. Rias looked embarrassed and Kuno looked hungry and excited. Okay, as long as the two of you keep it down a bit, yeah, I suppose we can make breakfast, but I need to shower first, alright. 
Issei was patting both girls on their heads again. Rius nods but Kuno shakes her head. Issei looks down at the fox princess. Oh, come on now, don't be like that. I'll be really fast. Besides, you'll get to see your, erm, papa in his high school uniform. Geez, that sounds weird now matter how you look at it. Issei shook his own head from his last sentence and smiled back down at Kuno. Uniform. Kuno flicks one of her ears. Rius's eyes widen suddenly as she looks back down at her own body. Oh shit, I can't go to class like this. Language. Rius. Issei was staring down at Rius with a stern expression. Rius froze in place momentarily, she then relented. I'm sorry. Issei nods with his eyes closed. All right. But look at me, Issei. There is no way I can go to school like this. Rius was now looking frustrated. Still with his eyes closed, Issei continues to nod. Yes, yes, I know, I know, there, there. Listen, don't sweat the small stuff. Worst case scenario, we have Sona pull a few strings, meanwhile you can study here at the house. Rius's attitude changed into her childish grumpy one. Sona, the little red-headed princess's face contorted into a cute little scowl. At the same time, both Issei and Kuno look toward Rius and say, Rius Ria Tan, in unison. Right afterwards, both father and daughter look back at each other and smirk. Rius's jaw dropped as she now had defeated expression. Well, let me run upstairs and hop in the shower, I'll be right. Knock knock knock. Instantly, little Rius, little Kuno and Issei all stare at the front door with suspicion. You two stay back in the living room, just in case. Issei was pushing both girls toward the end of the hallway. Knock 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 knock. Son of a bitch. I'm coming. Hold your shit. Issei was stomping toward the front door in sheer frustration. I just want to take a fucking shower. Jeez. Unbolting the deadlock, Issei slammed the door open while showing off his dissatisfaction with the current circumstances. What the hell do you, Irina? Amazon. Xenovia. It's Xenovia, you moron. Xenovia looked irate as the hood of her cloak was down, showing off her blue hair along with its green patch. Xenovia, please, you're not helping the situation. Irina was trying to fake a warm smile while covering for her partner's behavior. Scratching his head, Issei turned his attention toward Irina. What do you guys want? Interrupting the conversation, Xenovia's anger looked to have doubled as her voice got louder. The situation, the situation, really? Irina, the situation, you say. Okay, let's talk about the situation. First of all, explain that atrocious thing that you are carrying on your back. Issei now leans against the doorway while yawning. It's an original piece, one of a kind, it's a painting that is, Irina was now cut off by an even angrier Xenovia. You spent our entire stipend on that cheap copy of whatever it's supposed to be. Face it, Irina, you got scammed. We had to spend the night in an abandoned church. We had to bathe in a vacant fountain. All because of you. Xenovia punched at a nearby tree in anger. But, the Lord did say, Irina, once again, was cut off by Xenovia. Then there is the second problem. My S-caliber destruction. Your childhood friend broke it. Again, this is your fault, Irina. Xenovia now fell to the ground on one knee as her stomach began to growl at supernatural levels. Ooh. And the third problem, UGGH, we don't have any money for food. Irina had nothing to say. Then, both girls looked back toward Issei, who was still leaning against the doorway while looking disinterested. Tell you what, if you promise me that you two will behave yourselves, you can stay for breakfast. Issei was rolling his eyes hoping that he wouldn't regret this decision. Scene unknown location, Nako, I must begin the next stage of my surveillance soon. Ophis was standing next to a mirror as different styles of Lolita clothing would manifest itself onto her, then change into something else seconds later. NYA, I see. So, tell me about this next stage. Kuroka was tossing a yellow ball of yarn into the air and catching it with her other hand. It will involve direct contact with the security. Depending on the outcome, one of two options are guaranteed to occur. The first being that he may be persuaded to come along with me willingly. The second will be the unknown infinite variable. Looking at herself in the mirror, Ophis tilted her head while showing the slightest of smiles. Yes, this will do. 
Ophis was now wearing a pink and black sundress along with matching hair ribbons. So, did you need me to do anything, NYA? Kuroka batted the yellow yarn into the corner of the room. Perhaps you might help me in restraining the Sekir UT, if it comes to that. Ophis's slight smile turned into a slight grin. Scene, Hyodo Kitchen. All right, kiddo, pass me the pancake mix. Issei was holding a large mixing bowl along with a spatula. Kuno was holding onto a large plastic bag of pancake and waffle mix as she lifted it onto the counter next to Issei while smiling brightly. Check, Papa Kun. Great, okay, Rias, look for the vanilla extract for me, I think mom keeps it in the cupboard next to the sink. Issei started to add the mix to his bowl while also smiling. Little Rias made a cute salute and began to rummage through the cabinet. Let's see, cinnamon, clove, brown sugar, ah, vanilla extract. As this was going on, not far down the hallway was a half-asleep Yasaka, who was rubbing the sleep from her golden eyes. Yan, era era, smelling the air, the fox queen begins to slowly wake up as she continues on her way toward the kitchen. Walking into the entrance way of the dining room, Yasaka was surprised at the two girls sitting at the large table. Era era, good morning, ladies. Yasaka shows her sleepy but trademark crescent-shaped smile. Irina, who was sitting opposite of Zenovia, smiled very nervously. Um, good morning, um, ma'am. Zenovia remained quiet and didn't give the blonde woman any eye contact. Slowly making her way around the table, Yasaka made a very slight bow and continued onward towards the kitchen. Instantly finding the scene in front of her beyond cute, Yasaka made a quiet giggle within her arm sleeve as a blush began to form on both of her cheeks. Issei was teaching Kuno how to use a waffle iron properly as he had her standing on a stool right beside him. So, when the light turns green, that means it's ready for the next waffle. Easy peasy. Ah, I see, this one is different from the one mommy uses. With hers, you just put the iron over the stove and rotate it after some time. As you say, Papa, easy peasy. But this one is easier peasier. Kuno laughed at her own words. Meanwhile, Rias was also on a stool, preparing coffee, on the other side of Issei. How strong should I brew it, Issei? I don't usually do this so. Looking over toward Rias, Issei patted her head and looked over toward the coffee machine. Just fill the basin a little more and we should be good. That's usually how mom and dad make it. Nodding and smiling, Rias adds more coffee grounds. Era era, I just can't take it anymore. Yasaka was blushing like never before. Hearing the sudden outburst, little Rias, little Kuno and not so little Issei, all flinched at the random jump scare. Before Issei could turn his head around, two hands were grasping at his chest. Yasaka was now behind her husband with both arms wrapped around him. Are you intentionally trying to make me fall even deeper in love with you? Is that your devious plan, my little dragon of domination? Yasaka then bit Issei's ear. Nam. Chapter 54, Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 54, Stuff and Things. Scene, Hyodo Home, Kitchen. Ah, that tickles, Yasaka. A giggling Issei was doing his best not to make a mess as his hands were currently full. Meanwhile, Yasaka calmed down and simply continued her hug from behind Issei's back while blushing. So, I am guessing things went down smoothly after I suggested you take a bath before heading off to her apartment. Era era, Issei stopped for a moment while thinking and then smiled warmly. You bet, but do you think it's possible to talk her into moving in? I mean, she is so proud about living with challenges. She could easily afford a mansion of her own, but she insists on living the dorm life. I can't help but admire her, Yusaka. Rias takes a deep puff while showing a grumpy look. PFF. Sona just likes the attention. Kuno looks back toward Rias and places an index finger over the little redhead's mouth. It's that attitude that got you into your current situation, Ria Tan. Kuno looks abnormally stern. Issei and Yasaka both tilt their heads in surprise and shock. Oh, um, Issei Kun, do you have any coffee by any chance? Irina, still sitting in the dining room, raised her voice a bit to be heard. Yasaka then clears her throat. Ahem. Please be patient, dear. Issei has his hands full at the moment. Showing her usual crescent-shaped smile, Yasaka then looks back and whispers into Issei's ear. 
That is your childhood friend, correct? Issei nods. She's very pretty. Well, she seems innocent enough, though misguided. As far as her friend is concerned, I believe she is holding a grudge against you. I could sense the animosity the moment I stepped into the room. Yasaka then giggled quietly. You broke her sword, one that she is responsible for. Oh and what's this? Didrag Kun, what are you up to? Issei, I don't think this girl is going to be very happy about what you've done, era era. Issei shrugs his shoulders as he finishes helping Kuno with her part of breakfast. Well, it's not like I did anything, not really. Technically, this is all Didrag's fault, so, I'll just blame his lazy ass. Lazy ass, Issei's arm began to glow in colors of red and green. Both Rias and Kuno jumped a bit. Well, speak of the devil, or rather, dragon, I guess. Issei snickered. Firstly, what I did was make us even stronger, you idiot of a partner. Second, you now have a holy blade at your disposal. You're welcome. And third, I am not lazy. Issei's arm stopped glowing. Holy what? Um, I'm a devil. Dude, I'm not supposed to be able to mess with those things. Have you gone off your rocker? Issei was gaining a tick mark. Era era, is that so? How interesting. Very well. Issei, this is wonderful news. Now you will learn the art of the sword. Asuma Hayasaka kun would be proud. Yasaka's hug tightens as she smiles brightly with her eyes closed. What's this I hear about that? Devil, being able to use a holy sword. Really now, and what specific holy sword would that be? The blue-haired Zenovia was now standing in the kitchen walkway with her hands on her hips. Irina was standing behind her with a nervous smile. Um, Zenovia, how about we sit back down? Turning around, Issei was now facing the two with a nervous smile of his own. Thank you for announcing my sword thing to the entire world, Didrag. Sarcastically, Issei's arm responded with a quick flash of crimson and emerald. Anytime, partner, Zenovia now points in Issei's direction. So, what did you do with it? The broken blade of my sword, where is it? Issei waved his arms out in a panicking manner. It's not my fault, it was that glutinous no good dragon, Didrag. Zenovia looks as if she is about to power up, however a very loud and gurgling sound came thundering from the blue-haired woman's empty stomach. Oh! Zenovia fell to one knee as both hands cradled her own belly. Yasaka and Issei both look at each other and then nod. Tell you what, Zenovia, how about you chill out in the dining room and I'll have a huge plate of food, cooked just for you. Issei was nodding enthusiastically while making a motion toward the dining room with his arm. PFF! Fine, but this conversation isn't over, devil. Xenovia, with the help of a nervously smiling Irina, got to her feet as the two walked back into the dining room. Era era, I told you she wasn't going to be happy. Yasaka was quietly laughing into her sleeve. Foo 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 foo. Kuno was also laughing with both of her little hands over her own mouth. Rias was going to laugh, that was until her own stomach began to growl. Oh. Rias was now holding onto her empty tummy with both hands. Scene unknown location. Are you absolutely sure of this plan of yours, Nako? I don't understand why I need to have such a story. Ophis was wearing a pink and black sundress as she stared blankly toward Kuroka. NYA, because you will be in the human world. Infinite dragon god or not, you look like a kid. Questions will be asked because humans love asking questions. So it's better to have a good story prepared. Kuroka, who was wearing a very casual blue jeans and white tank top getup, was nodding at her own comment. Ophis tilts her head, I find this all so tedious. Kuroka raises her finger into the air. Okay, once more, with feeling this time. Ophis tilts her head the other way and then pauses for a moment. Line, Kuroka facepalms. Scene, Hyodo home, dining room. Zenobia and Irina were eating as if they had been starving. Rias wasn't much better when it came to manners. Both Hyodo parents, Yusaka, Kuno and Issei were also sitting at the table, while pretending not to notice the barbaric behavior of the other three. Asia was quietly eating while making glances at Issei. So, Irina-chan, it's so nice to see you. I must ask though, do your parents not feed you dear? Mrs. Hyodo kept both of her eyes closed as she took a sip of tea. Irina smiles and swallows her mouthful of food. Oh, well, I've been kind of doing my own things as of late so I don't live at home anymore. 
Issei interrupts. Yeah, so, why are you guys here, again? Issei is showing a slightly annoyed look. Zenobia grinds her teeth a bit but then calms down and speaks up. We are here on orders from the church. We were originally going to tell the two devil, leaders, to stay out of our way. But now, Irina stands up and bows suddenly. Issei Hiodo, I apologize for my harsh words from the last time we met. There was no excuse aside from sheer ignorance on my part. I've just been with the church for so long, but no, no that's not an excuse either. Issei folds her his arms while showing a slight scowl toward Irina. Yasaka sees this and places one of her hands softly on Issei's shoulder. Yeah, well, I'm just a filthy devil, so don't you worry for one second. I can't speak for Sona, but I can promise you this, I won't have a single thing to do with the lot of you. Want me out of your way, is that right? Well, how about you start by staying out of mine? Issei then angrily took a bite of his eggs on toast. Both misses, Hiodo and Yusaka spoke in unison. Issei, that was rude. Right afterwards, both women looked at one another and giggled in tandem. Irina sat back down and went quiet as her expression was solemn. Zenobia looked back at her compatriot and showed a look of concern. Standing up, Zenobia proceeded to bow. Irina is right, we messed up, I am a strong woman who can admit when she is outclassed and outmatched. Never could I have imagined anyone, not just a devil, but anyone, breaking an Excalibur with their own hand. I submit to your strength, Issei Hiodo. For my words and actions, even from earlier, please, allow me to apologize. You may use my body as you please, as penance. Everyone at the dining table had looks of shock. Zenovia. Irina was doing a double take on Zenovia and then Issei. Asia Argento did not like where this was going as her expression showed a bit of anger behind her pursed lips. The blue-haired woman rises from her bow and shows a look of all-out seriousness. I do have only one request, Red Dragon Emperor. Issei, who is in his own state of shock nods with his jaw agape. Your pedigree would provide me with wonderful offspring. Issei, give me children. Zenobia made this declaration with absolute fervor. Each and every person around the dinner table had a reaction. Kuno and Rias both made very loud, ooh, noises. Asia was uncharacteristically grinding her teeth. Yusaka was blushing madly as her grip on Issei's shoulder tightened ever so slightly. Mr. Hiodo was giving Issei the thumbs up while showing his lecherous smile. Mrs. Hiodo was imagining more grandchildren. Scene, unknown location. Fought. N.Y.A. That woman is far too forward. Kuroka looked to have fallen off of the large bed and onto the floor. This is unquantifiable. Ophis tilts her head while showing a slightly irritated look. Scene, Hiodo home, dining room. Shaking his head back and forth rapidly, Issei couldn't believe what he was hearing. Are you insane? Zenobia tilts her head. Is my body not attractive enough? That's not the point. Issei looked both flustered and annoyed. I know my partner, I'm pretty sure he doesn't mind your body. Shut up. Dedrag, Yusaka proceeds to remove her hand from Issei's shoulder as she grows her trademark smile. She then claps her hands together one time, gaining everyone's attention. Please, everyone, calm down for a moment. Yusaka turns her attention to both Irina and Zenovia as smile turns into a serious expression. I would like the both of you to explain to me why you are actually here. What is your mission? Irina and Zenovia both look at each other and then shake both of their heads simultaneously. Really now, era era, I see. Very well. Yusaka shows a very slight smirk in her expression as the fox queen begins to close her golden eyes. The dining room was very quiet. Mr. and Mrs. Hiodo looked at one another with puzzling glances. Rias wanted to say something, however Kuno kept one of her hands over the little redhead's mouth. Asia was once again staring in Issei's direction with an unreadable expression. Era era, so, how many pieces are there then? Seems like a lot of trouble and effort, for something so trifle. Fu 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 fu, Yasaka now had both eyes open as she giggled into her sleeve. Issei tilted his head while staring at his wife. What's so funny? Nodding, Yasaka leaned over and whispered. Into Issei's ear. They are looking for more of those Excalibur fragments, the very same kind that you, well, ingested. Pulling away, Yusaka began to giggle once more. Issei scratched the back of his head while looking back at Zenovia. 
All right then, so you are looking for more of those, things, right? Why are they so important? Is the church planning a war with the devils? I mean, those things hurt like hell to us, so, I can't think of another reason as to why you need them. Issei was waiting for a reply. Rias broke away from Kuno's vice grip on her mouth. What? Things? Are you talking about, Issei? Both Zenovia and Irina both had expressions of shock and worry. Issei looks back at Rias while smiling warmly. S caliber. Knock knock knock. Kuno immediately jumped off of her chair and ran for the front door. I'll get it. Issei decided to get up as well, to keep an eye on his daughter. Yeah, wait up, kiddo, I'm coming too. Yasaka immediately blushes at Issei's actions as does Mrs. Hiyodo. Kuno opened the door only for both Sona and Tsubaki to be standing outside. Sona looked down at Kuno and waved. Kuno waved back while smiling. Tsubaki followed along with the pleasantries. Issei had Kuno and Tsubaki walk through the door before taking hold of Sona's hips and pulling her into a sudden kiss. Still showing her usual stoic features, Sona produced a blush that could rival Rias's hair color. After breaking away, Sona adjusted her glasses. Well, good morning to you as well, Hiyodo. Issei tilted his head for a moment while showing a sarcastic expression. Hiyodo, okay, you've asked for it. Going in for a second smooch, Issei made this one last a bit longer. Breaking away for a second time, Sona readjusted her glasses once more. Good morning, Issei. Sona was now visually smiling. Chapter 55, Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 55, Afternoon Delight. Scene, Hiyodo Home, Dining Room. Good morning Sona-chan and Tsubaki-chan. Please, sit down. Issei made enough food for an army. Mrs. Hiyodo showed a very friendly expression toward the new arrivals. Good morning to you as well. Please pardon my intrusion. Sona smiled back as she sat down while Tsubaki did the same. Issei smirked toward Sona. You missed some juicy stuff from these two. No matter. Issei looked back toward Xenovia. How about you start from the beginning? Blushing. Xenovia sat back down and cleared her throat. As you wish. Doing as she was asked, Xenovia re-explained the reasoning as to why they were in Kuo and their original mission to retrieve the Escalibur fragments. After a few minutes, the explanation was over and then Sona immediately replied. Who, aside from your faction, would be using such things? More so, why are they in my territory? Sona adjusts her glasses while showing her trademark stoic expression. Oddly enough, Issei's parents looked intrigued now as they were nodding at Sona's questions. Issei was impressed by Sona's wit and resolve as he dreamily stared toward her. Yasaka dropped her jaw only momentarily before catching herself. Rias had a serious look on her little face as she nodded quietly. Asia decided to quietly stand up. Only Kuno noticed as she watched the blonde teen inch her way toward and behind Issei's chair. Issei suddenly felt a hand on his shoulder. Thinking it was Yasaka's, Issei took hold of it while waiting for a response from either Zenovia or Irina. The hand felt very familiar but different from Yusaka's. Looking behind him, Asia was standing with a nervous smile on her face. Issei smiled warmly back at her and pulled her to his free side. Without anyone else noticing, Asia sat down on the other side of Issei, however, to her pleasant surprise, the smiling. Teen pulled her seat closer to his. Hey, stranger. Issei smiled at a now blushing Asia. Yusaka turned and noticed while showing an approving nod. There is a faction of renegade exorcists who are working with possible fallen angels. Our information is sketchy, but that's really all we know. Xenovia showed a defeated expression. Sona smirks. So, you need help, don't you? Irina nods as Xenovia hesitantly follows in with a nod of her own. Little Rias speaks up. Um, Issei, Sona, the rest of you. It's about Kiba. Everyone got quiet and looked toward the little redhead sitting in her chair with a juice cup in her hand. I found him on the verge of death, not far from a large cathedral. Rias takes a sip of her juice. He told me that he was used as a test subject involving Escalibur and he wasn't alone. There were other kids too, but they all died. I think he may take it pretty hard when he finds out about these exorcists and their mission. Kuno lifted an eyebrow. Who is this Kiba person? Issei replies. He's a good dude, a bit too serious for my taste, but he is a really nice guy. 
Sona and Tsubaki both look at one another with unreadable glances. Yasaka shows an expression of sadness. Her usual smile is gone, only to be replaced by a sorrowful frown. The poor boy. Asia also looks incredibly distraught. I can't believe that the church would experiment on children. Rias replied in all seriousness. The testing that was done on them was extremely painful. In the end, the church decided to euthanize the children. They were gassed if I remember correctly. Rias took another sip of her juice. If I hadn't made Kiba my knight, he also would have died. Xenovia showed a deep scowl. So, these experiments are the result of our weapons that we carry. Irina looked toward her right arm as a whip-like and shiny piece of metal unraveled itself and slowly formed into a thin blade. Irina then held it in the air for everyone to see. The room got quiet as Irina did the best she could not to cry. This is Escalibur Mimic. I've heard rumors as to how these swords were made but I couldn't let myself believe any of it. Until now, I've always thought I was wielding a mighty weapon of the Lord, but that's not true. Instead I'm holding something that was bathed in the blood of children. Irina couldn't take it anymore and started to cry. Issei thought for a moment and then slapped the table with his hand in anger. It doesn't matter. The entire room had Issei's attention. Yeah, the ones responsible for those atrocities are the true monsters, no doubt. So why not use the damn things for good? Those kids shouldn't have died in vain. I say let's find these corrupt church fucks and shove these Escalibur things straight up each of their asses. Issei then crossed his arms while showing a look of rage. Sona showed a slight grin. Well, aside from the vulgarity, I must admit, I'm with Issei on this. Scene, Kuo Academy. Sona, Tsubaki, Asia and Issei were making their way toward the front gates of the high school only to see Akino, Kaneko and Kiba waiting for them. Minus 30 minutes ago, Era, sweetheart, don't forget your school bag. Yasaka was rushing toward Issei who was standing near the front door of the Hyodo home. Sona rolled her eyes. Really? You are that airheaded, Baka? Tsubaki snickers. Rias can be heard in the other room demanding that she be allowed to go to school. Meanwhile Issei's parents as well as Kuno can be heard repeatedly telling her no. Issei smiles nervously as Yusaka hands him his backpack. She then kisses him on the cheek which makes the teen blush madly. Have a great day at your high school. I'm sure it will be a very fulfilling learning experience. Be safe, dear. Yasaka bows and looks behind her while continuing to hear the bickering involving little Rias. Ah, I see that mother and father will need some backup when it comes to that devil princess. Present time, Kaneko ran up to Issei while smiling up at him. Issei took a moment to understand what she wanted and then remembered what she had told him not long after his return from Kyoto. Smiling back, Issei began to pat Kaneko on her head. Good morning, Kaneko. Did you sleep well? Softly closing her eyes, Kaneko nodded silently. Good to hear. Issei turns his attention onto Akino. How have you been, Akino Senpei? I am well. Seraphal has been an interesting substitute for Rias. She was in my room until late last night, discussing possible plans for what she calls battle uniforms. Though, I would call them costumes. Luckily, I think I was able to talk her out of it. Akino shows a tired smile. Yeah, that sounds like Milky Chan, Erm, Seraphal. Issei was rubbing the back of his head nervously as Sona rolled her eyes once again. As Issei was giggling, his eyes met with Kiba's. Instantly the mood changed as the small group of peers got rather quiet. Hey Kiba, um, hey, you think maybe the two of us could talk, alone? Issei spoke in a solemn tone. The blonde-haired teen showed a strange smile and then nodded. Moments later, the two met near the old school building. Hey dude, look, I figure this should come from me so I'm just going to say it. Kiba, I know about the Holy Sword project. Issei had a completely stoic expression which was odd for him. Well, on a good note, we are gonna hunt down the fucks responsible for all of that. Showing a small grin, Issei waited for Kiba's response. Leaning against the old school building, Kiba had an unreadable expression as he stayed quiet for a few moments. I see, I must ask, Issei, why did you bring me out here just to tell me that? Issei took a deep breath. Well, do you remember those ladies with the sword that I broke? Kiba nods. The drag sword of ate the blade. Also, those two girls are going to be joining us in hunting down the, erm, what did she call them? Oh yeah, 
renegade exorcists. Issei just spit all of that information out at once. Kiba took a moment to understand what was being conveyed and then nodded. That's fine, though those girls better understand that I am their superior and if they so much look at Asia cross-eyed, I swear, oh. Issei interrupted, if they bring up that witch bullshit again, I can promise that I will break more than their stupid swords. Kiba smirked as did Issei. The two then high-fived. Kiba then remembered something. Wait, you said Didrag ate that S-caliber fragment. Issei shrugs. He said it will make me tougher or something. He didn't really explain shit. All I know is that it hurt like hell. It was first thing in the morning too. Stupid dragon. Kiba scratched his chin while deep in thought and then he spoke. So, you can manifest a holy sword then. Issei shrugs again. Dude, I dunno if it manifests a giant dildo or a nuclear missile. I got zero clue. The two left the conversation at that, though Kiba laughed regarding Issei's last comment. The day went on as homeroom class was yet another plethora of betrayal looks coming from Matsuda, Motohama and Aika. After a few more periods of different classrooms, the lunch bell signaled. Walking down the large hallways of Kuo Academy, Issei was walking alongside Sona, Tsubaki as Momo, Reya, Ruruko and Saji caught up with them. Sup, lover boy, Saji was smiling with a slight grin. Want me to toss your ass again? Issei returned Saji's grin. Instantly, both Tsubasa and Tomo came out from nowhere, both heaving for breath. Tomo spoke up after taking a few gulps of oxygen. Hiodo, there is some woman walking around the school, claiming to be your wife. While asking where you are, Tsubasa nods, an older and very beautiful woman. That blonde hair with her Japanese features, you know, I don't think she dies it. Tomo nods back, and those boobs, Sona grinds her teeth. Kyoto, Issei now shows a look of panic. It can't be, Yas, Yas, Yasaka. Before another word could be said, the Grimori peerage came running along through the hallways until they spotted Issei. Issei, Asia was running ahead of the group with Kaneko not far behind. Teachers and students stopped in their tracks to see what the commotion was all about. Sona facepalmed, no amount of memory wiping is going to fix this. Issei shook his head back and forth while freaking out slightly. Why would she come here? Oh, darling, there you are. Era era, coming from around the corner was none other than Yasaka, queen of the yokai. She was wearing a white colored sundress with yellow daisy patterns. The outfit was cut near the shoulders which provided an ample amount of cleavage to be exposed. Wearing a large and woven sun hat, Yasaka looked to be in a human form as her tails were somehow hidden. Issei assumed her ears were hidden under the fashionable hat she was wearing. Then there was the old-fashioned picnic basket she held in one of her arms as one side was left open, showing a set of bento boxes. Issei's jaw dropped along with each and every other student and teacher within the vicinity. Matsuda and Motohama happened to be present for this encounter and proceeded to scream at themselves. Hiodo is not only a traitor, he is also a MILF magnet. Matsuda cried out. Motohama bursted into tears. Why? Just why? Aika walked in between the sobbing boys while eyeballing this blonde beauty. Damn, Kyoto, are you sure you can handle that? Aika began to blush. Then again, maybe she is the driver. Well that's all for now see you in the next part.